we've talked about the rules for naming of elements and attributes and the parentage of elements and attributes. Let's start now talking about the, the rules for the values that can go in elements and attributes. There's a number of different kinds of rules. The ones that we're going to start with um, and the ones that will most concern us are the rules of data types. And within those data types, there's really two, ID and ID ref, that are going to be the ones that are worth spending a lot of time on and um, thinking hard about. Uh, but before I go there, let me, let me um, explain a few of the simpler ones, uh, beginning with the idea of a default data type. That is the data type if no data type is specified. So let's go back over here to Articles XSD. And first of all, let me show you the place where data types are, um, are, are there, where data types are shown. And that's, again, in this Attributes tab, which I'll pin here. And under the type, uh, under the um, under the type attribute in the attributes view over here on the side of the window, so we can click on any tag. For example, this one, and now we see the tag. The type is blank. Or let's work with the title. The type of the title is blank. By the way, this thing up here that says is reference shows that the title element is um, is global. We know that that little arrow also indicates the globalness if we go over here and look at this thing that says is reference. That'll also be set to true, and that makes that makes it a reference to a global element. Where we are right now is talking about its type. So I can click over here, and I can choose a set of types. So here are all the types, and you can see there's a big, long list of them. There are very few that we're really going to care about. There's only a couple that I'm going to actually demonstrate to you, and as I said, it's the ID and the ID ref ones that we really want to pay attention to and, and understand, because those ID and ID refs are ones that really have the most to do with modeling and give us the most power in our in our modeling ability for information systems. So the default default, default data type, what do you think? What What is allowed to go in the title if no data type is specified? Well, let's look at a valid instance, and let's look at some titles here. Here's a title. What is that? Is that a date? Is that an ID? No, it's just a text string. The default data type is, in effect, a string, a text string. But no, obviously, not mixed because it has no elements in between it, just a simple string sequence of characters. So that's the default, the default data type. I can also set the data type specifically. If I go here and I set it specifically to XS string. And I choose the string data type. And now notice that the data type is shown here. And notice, by the way, that changing this one here also changes this one here because it's a global element. Any change to one is a change to all. Now I've changed the data type of the title. I'll save my schema here. Now is or is not my file valid? I'm going to click the valid button. And notice down here again it says document is valid. So the difference between setting explicitly the data type to string and having no data type in there really didn't make much of a difference because the default data type is string. In our class, the only time we're going to use the string data type is in something called an enumerated list, which I'll introduce later on. Other than that, if it's a string, you can just leave it blank. And by the way, um, let me get rid of the data type there. For elements that have only children, there's no data type at all because nothing goes in there except child elements. You understand that under the author tag here, you'll see nothing under the author tag except the name and the email, right? So there's the author tag itself really has no um, has no data type, and so that's indicated here by this thing that says CT anonymous. Okay, so let's let's talk now about some date data types, and for that I'm going to go down to a date tag here. And here's a question based on what we just uh, what we've just talked about. What is the data type of this element called create date? And what's allowed to go in the create date? If you remember from just a few minutes ago, your eyes moved up here to this thing that said type. You looked in here and not seeing anything in there, you said, oh, well, it doesn't have any data type at all in it. So I guess it must be just a string, which means it says create date, but it doesn't really have to be a date. It can be anything you want it to be. So let's go back over to Articles XML and prove that to ourselves. Let me get down to one of these dates and close up some of this stuff. Here's a create date. Look at this create date. is empty. It's got nothing at all in it. Or it can have this junk in it. Right? It doesn't have to have a date. Click the validation button. Sure enough, it's valid. So my date is not really controlled to be a date at all. This one down here that says post date happens to have a date in it, but it's not. But it doesn't have to be a date. It could be anything you want, and still the file is valid. 
Okay, so let me get rid of those changes. And now let's set it so that it actually has to be a date. So let's go to, actually let's work with post date because this will show us something else. I go up here to type, I go XS. By the way, the, word, the, the reason that it has XS in here, that's a namespace and that defines that it's in the schema namespace. And I'm gonna call it XS date. And now it says down here that it's a date and now it will have to be a date. And so now when I go down here, back, oh, I save this, go back over to articles XML and now is this valid or not well I'm gonna to have to notice it's not giving me an indication I'm gonna to have to click the validity button I click it and something happened I got a bunch of red things over here it looks like I got a lot of problems and in fact it underlined March 30th 2007 and said is not a valid value for date what March 30th 2007 that looks like a valid date to me well unfortunately for mere mortals there's only one kind of date that is acceptable under this uh, under this data type of a date, and it looks like this. 2007, 04, I forget what the date was, let's just say it was 17. That's a valid date. Only one way to type a valid date in XML, and that's it. Year, 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 month, month, day, day. That's how a date works. Now, suppose we want to be more specific, and we'll go back over here, and instead of having it be a date, we're going to make it a date time. So now it's a date and a time. Save our schema. Go back and validate again. And notice now it becomes invalid because it has no time. Only one valid way to type a time. Separate the date and the time with a T. Then type in the hour. 12, and that's a 24-hour clock. 23 and, uh, and 54 seconds. And now that's a valid date and time. Here's the date part, separated with a T. Here's the time part. And so anything that's a date and time will have to be in this format, which um, gives you a little bit of a heartache when you try to, to display it and have it look like what mere mortals would understand as a date, like March uh, 17th, 2007. Okay, so let me get rid of some of this stuff, put that back to where it was, put this back to where it was, and now we're ready to talk about the biggies. We come back over here, we validate, make sure everything is okay. Um, whoops, why is it okay? Because I didn't save this. So notice that I always try to get back to a state of grace here. Make sure that before I do anything else that breaks it, I'm back to being fixed. That's a really good technique for you guys to use. Make sure after every change you go back to a state of validity and that everything is okay and then change something and hit that validation button again and see if it messed something up. If it messed something up, fix it and then go on. Don't wait too long before hitting that validity button because the errors compound and you can forget what it is you changed and all of a sudden spend hours and hours um, trying to find something that should have been really easy to find if you had hit the validity button right after breaking it. Okay, so now I want to go to um, the two biggies. Uh, the, uh, the idea of an ID and the idea of an ID ref. So as you remember from earlier, um, IDs are unique identifiers and ID refs are pointers or references to those unique identifiers. Now I want to show you how they work mechanically inside of an XML file. So let's find some IDs and some ID refs here. 